appreciate everyone for sticking around and indulging me. Um, and I also want to thank Angela and Norman and uh, NACDL for inviting me here today. Uh, I want to congratulate you on this terrific report. On behalf of uh, Legal Action Center and the National Hire Network, we're really excited for being able to use this in our work. Um, for those of you who don't know, Legal Action Center is a nonprofit law and policy organization headquartered in New York. I work here in our DC office. Um, we, we strive to eliminate discrimination against people with criminal records, HIV or AIDS, um, or histories of addiction, and to promote and expand opportunities for folks who are members of that population, uh, or any of those populations. Um, in, in, DC, in our DC office, I work on national policy um, and, and really trying to reduce a lot of the, the federal collateral consequences that are discussed in this report. Um, and so I'm just going to um, try to be quick because I know, I know we're over time, but I, I just want to reflect on a couple of themes that really stuck out to me in the report. Um, and one of those is that this, uh, and this is almost, a, I guess, a paraphrase, not a direct quote uh, of, of something that I saw in here, and that, that is that this issue is really a matter of both morality and practicality. Uh, morality because it, 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 it forces us to ask ourselves what kind of country do we want to be? Um, do we want to live in a country where uh, people have second chances? Do we want to live in a country where we believe in redemption and that, and that people can improve their lives? Um, or do we want to live in a country where um, a single mistake um, or several mistakes, youthful mistakes sometimes, uh, follow a person for the rest of their lives and, and um, sort of tell the 65 million plus people with criminal records that they will be permanently um, reduced to, to some sort of second class citizenship. Um, and, and the other thing that really struck me um, in the report was just the pervasiveness. And, and so one of, the uh, one of the things that I work on here in DC is, is the federal collateral consequences around employment, education, housing, and public benefits that a lot of folks know about. Um, they're statutory, and people have been working on getting rid of them for a lot longer than I've been doing this work. Um, but a lot of the times, we don't talk about the stigma and the social experience of people who have, who have a criminal record um, and what that means for them in their everyday lives. And so we've, we've already heard from some great panelists about that. And I also wanted to just talk a little bit about my personal experience um, going through the criminal justice system and what that has meant in my life. Um, so several years ago in my, my final law school semester, I, uh, my girlfriend planned a birthday party for me. And we went out drinking at some bars in Baltimore. And we lived together in Annapolis. So we had a long drive home. Um, and I foolishly decided that I was going to drive the car that night after drinking with my friends. I flipped my car on I-97 and killed Laura that night. Um, subsequently, of course, I was uh, rightfully convicted of negligent homicide and, and received a criminal record in a and a short sentence of incarceration in local jail. And many people will know that local jail uh, typically means people are serving a shorter sentence. Um, and, and there's a lot more focus on, on um, reentry right from the moment that you get in there. And people are really thinking about what their lives are going to be like when they get home. And because I had the legal education, I was able to do a little bit of jailhouse lawyering and made some friends. Um, and they also you know, went about sort of educating me and preparing me for what it was going to be like when I got home. And I still didn't really expect it to be as difficult as it was because I come from a background where I have a lot of advantages. Um, I'd gone to law school, I had a great education, employment history, and still confronted a lot of the really uh, just awful uh, employment challenges that, that are described in this report and other people's experiences. Um, and I hadn't really experienced that kind of rejection before. Very difficult to go through. Um, ultimately, though, as you can see, I, I, I was able to find good work. I love my job, and I'm very happy to to have gone the route that I went through to get here. Um, and I've been able to move on to my family life. I, I have a beautiful wife and two children. My, my second child was just born a few months ago. Um, but I continue to find that although I've gotten past these, these, uh, these huge barriers around employment and housing and all these things, um, that you can never really get away from the criminal record. Um, and so just a few examples of things that most people just take for granted are you know, I have two kids, so I want to make sure that they're, they're safe and secure and, and taken care of if something happens to me. So, of course, my wife and I decided to get life insurance so that they could uh, be financially protected if, if one of us was, was uh, to suffer um, an accident or, or, or die for whatever reason. Um, and it was very easy to get my wife life insurance. Very difficult to get life insurance if you have to admit to having a felony conviction. And a lot more expensive, so uh, that... that uh, it's just one of those kind of small things that, you know, it just always comes up. Um, 
we're also, as I said, we just had our second kid, so we're starting to outgrow our house and thinking about where might, where might we move next. Anytime these kinds of things come up, because in this area, of course, you have Washington, Maryland, Virginia. I'm, I'm, I live in Maryland myself. I have to think about, well, would we ever move to northern Virginia, but I want to give up my voting right for a while. Um, you know, well, I, I actually used to like going to the shooting range. In Maryland, that's definitely not an option for a person with a felony conviction. In other states, there might be an opportunity in the future to enjoy that sport again. Um, but just thinking about like these trade-offs, where I go, which rights am I willing to give up if I want to gain some new rights, and, and sort of having to calculate that into the decisions um, is, is um, discouraging. Um, I think about volunteering at school, coaching my son's teams, my daughter's teams when they grow up. That was something I really enjoyed uh, doing with my father when he was growing up. And not being able to do that because I have a homicide conviction, which of course is, is the most serious um, types of convictions, and, and um, that's very discouraging. Um, so I just want people to think about the fact that these collateral consequences are, are getting in the way of people just doing normal things, just living normal lives. Um, it's really, it's, it's unacceptable. And I'm, I'm happy to and feel fortunate to be in a position where I can have a somewhat normal life um, after that. But a lot of people don't have those opportunities and the advantages that put them in a position where they can overcome any of these barriers. Um, and so I hope that this report will really be a launching point for that national conversation around how we treat people um, and, and how we want to um, give people an opportunity to, to redeem themselves and, and to feel like uh, there are second chances in this country. Thank you.